Hello, this is video number five for kinematics and we will talk about rebound. So as you can see, this is a familiar scene. I'm up here. Okay, and uh, in the previous video, 3.4, don't look at this title. Lah. Okay, it's a continuation of the previous video. The When the ball is being dropped, right, there's some form of rebounding happening. So we are going to focus on the rebound today because, well pass your questions. So if you notice, right, there's a rebounding here at the ball when it hits the ground. Cannot see, ah, never mind, slow-mo. So it rebounds. And you can see based on the ball, on the lines, whenever the ball rebounds, the height is decreased. Well, this is because when the ball collides with the floor, there is a loss in kinetic energy. Law. That's why whenever the ball rebounds, it doesn't go back to the same height. And uh, actually, this rebound height, right, is a geometric progression, ah. If this interests you but today we're going to learn how to graph this motion okay and we're going to have two variations of this graph the first one would be uh, with re rebound where the kinetic energy is conserved meaning whenever the ball collides with the floor it doesn't lose much of its kinetic energy and example of this would be a ping pong ball ping pong ball will approximate that but not really as well Reason being, right, whenever you have any form of rebound, there's definitely energy loss in the form of kinetic. No, sorry. There will always be energy loss from kinetic in the form of sound or heat. So you can see this ball, let's say it hits the ground at T is equal to T. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to combine the both graphs that is from the left side, left-hand side. Of course, again, your G is always, the acceleration is always negative G, okay. Um... And this part, I will speed up a bit. So what you can do is you can refer to your content library to copy the notes. Lah. All right, I will talk you through the graph. So uh, here what I'm doing is I'm sectioning out even sections to uh, show the time. And you can see I speed up this part already because uh, the time taken for the ball to drop and the time taken for the ball to go up should have some form of similarity or comparison, lah, seeing that there's no loss in kinetic energy. Okay, so um, we're going to look at the first graph first where there's no loss in kinetic energy. And as you can see, I'm annoyed with how crooked the line is. So there we go. Acceleration is always negative g. All right. And here, okay, I'm still going to take the, the correct, con the normal convention. Up is positive, down is negative. Lah, huh? So here, you can see, oh, I am trying to sketch out. Nah, up is positive, down is negative. Okay. So, how would this graph look like? Let's consider this first section no, when the ball is falling down, which is the same as the first case, right? Right. So for this part, when the ball is falling down, I can just copy and copy this graph. Uh, this graph here. You can see this part is this part. Sorry, my mouse is here. You can see this part is this part, and then this velocity we follow. Lo. I'm just copying the first graph. Uh. You can see this section. All right, this curve is this curve. All right, so let's say it hits the ground at a velocity v. So downwards there will be negative v. Okay, so here is positive v. So just for comparison, I'm going to draw a scaling line for the velocity v, because there's no loss in kinetic energy or ke is conserved. So you hit the ground at v, you rebound at v at the same time. Okay, so from here you can see that I'm going to redraw because now uh, when it rebounds, right, you have the ball going up and then coming down, which is actually the second case, which means I can copy the graph from this one. Uh. I can copy this one and put at the second portion. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm going to draw out the velocity, okay, just to compare whether the rebound speed is always the same, right? So what will happen uh, is that now when your ball is on the way up, which is this portion, okay? You can see these three lines will always be parallel, all right? Because here, let me pause first. Here, the ball is falling down. Hit the ground, come up, and then fall down again. Hit the ground, come up, and then fall up again, okay? So, uh, what I'm trying to say is, this part, is when the ball is falling down, here it hits the ground, and then it turns, and then it goes up. The ball is on the way up from the floor. 
That's why the V suddenly become positive. Okay? So when the ball is on the way up, let me get a ball. So that you have an idea. Yes, it's the same ball. Okay. So think about it this way. When your ball is going down, the ball is traveling down or is this part. Faster and faster, faster and faster, faster and faster, hit the ground. So when it hits the ground, right? Let's say this is the ground. Oh, let me check the camera. Okay, let's say this is the ground. When the ball hits the ground, it will turn, it will turn and go up. So called turn now. It will rebound and go up. So when it's rebound and going up, your velocity will change from this negative V hitting the floor to positive V going up. Okay? So um, this one would be positive V. And then on the way up, or it will slow down and stop at maximum height. And then speed up and hit the ground. And then again, rebound. See? So now it will go up and slow down, maximum height. And then hit the ground. So you get a lot of these kind of lines. Uh. And this, all these lines will be parallel. Why? Because all of these lines should have the gradient of negative g. Okay? So the next part I want to talk about is the area. This area is the distance being dropped. This area is the distance of the ball going up. So these two areas must be the same because there's no loss in kinetic energy. If I fall 10 meters, I will rise up 10 meters. Alright? So and, and also at the same time, uh, this area and this area will also be the same. All the areas are the same. Lah. So then you can see, oh, hey, how do I draw the ST graph? So again, we copy the shape. Lah. Is a quadratic shape, okay? So this one will be like this, and this one will be like this. So this one, uh, slightly different than Miss Ellie, I'm taking the starting position as zero, which is the top. So the ball always travel is always traveling below, and then this point here is this point here is the floor, okay? So this is starting point, return to starting point, okay? So you can maintain the speed lah. You can see. I'm trying to plot the first the rebound is here, second rebound is here. All right, okay. And as mentioned previously, you must be parallel lines. Okay, this is to show that they have the same gradient, and because of this, they have the same acceleration, negative nine point eight one. Now, what happens when your ke is not conserved? Are you able to return to the original height? Then the answer to that will be no, no, because whenever you collide, you will go up. Slightly lower, slightly lower, slightly lower. This one is what is recorded in the demonstration just now, like in the video just now. All right. So I'm just going to roughly draw the trajectory of the balls. All right. This one is when uh, there is a loss in kinetic energy for the second case. So okay, it's lost during collision. Whenever the ball hits the ground, you hear a sound that is kinetic energy being lost. So the ball cannot go up as high. All right. So here, uh, I'm just going to label the rebound speed as V2 and the speed where it hits the ground as V1. So, of course, V2 will be less than V1. Lah. Lost Ke, mah. meaning I can't go up to the same height. So, maybe this is H2. Okay. Of course, it's going to fall, uh, fall down and then hit the ground with, let's say, V2. Okay. And then it will rise up at V3. So, once again, V3 is less than V2. Lor. Okay. This V3 arrow should be pointing up. Ah. All right. So anyway, basically, you're going to get this rebound. Uh, ding, 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 ding. All right. So I'm not going to prove that this is a geometric progression because there's just too much maths for me as well. Although I quite like maths. What I'm going to do is just to draw the ST and the VT graph. Now, the AT graph will still be the same. Why? Because acceleration is linked to force. And the only force acting on the ball so far is just gravity. Okay. The only part where it's not gravity is when it hits the floor for a short moment of time. So you can see here, I noticed that, hey, when you rebound, no, every time every time you reach maximum height, you will need less time. Does that make sense? At every rebound, you will need less time to reach the maximum height. So you can see I am changing the time scale all over again. Okay? So this one here, let's say this is H1. So H1 is obviously bigger than H2 lah, because you can't go back to the original height. Compared to the one, the this example we discussed just now, you can go back to the original height because you can go back to the original speed. So you can see this graph for rebound, but this area is less. Okay, 
just like this area will also be less. But you see, uh, if this area is H2, where's my mouse? Then this area also must be H2. Because if the ball rises, let's say 0.5 meter, it should also drop 0.5 meter. It would be very weird if I go up by 5 meter, I mean 0.5 meter and come down more than 0.5 meter, means fall to the ground already. Oh. Barrel into the ground. Less than 5, because don't forget our zero line is the ground. Okay, less than 5 meter, even more scary. Yeah. Less than 0.5 meter is even more scary because you'll be floating. It's not the haunting, okay? Physics is physics. You know, you want to make something look scary, just don't obey the laws of physics. Then you'll be like, because you're so used to gravity. All right, anyway, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm uh, faffing about and trying to make sure all the lines are parallel. Because once again, gradient is the acceleration, which is nine negative 9.81. So you can see, after I faffed about, I have fast forward this because it took me a while. And then you notice that the VT graph will look like this. Huh? You compare left and right. Oh. Number one, you will notice that the time, the rebound time is slow because ding, 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 ding. Does that make sense? Okay. So every rebound will take a shorter period of time. That's why the area, I mean, the length, the rebound speed is decreasing. You can see all this rebound speed is getting smaller and smaller. Okay. Until you cannot perceive anymore. And then, of course, how about the displacement there? Here is the same, but since you cannot go up to the maximum height, then you get something like this. So the zero is still, the maximum point, uh, the turning point is still aligned to when V is zero, okay? Here to here. All right. So that's why you can see this one is, oh, strangely looking like this one. Being able to interpret the graph is very important because we are trying to describe a fairly complex movement or motion, all right? Trying to describe this uh, fairly complex motion by talking about stuff like, uh, how do we represent this in velocity time and also displacement time graph? So we're going to move on next to a few examples before I send you off on your way to do whatever work that needs to be done. Okay, this is our first example. It's in page 29. Or specifically, if the page number has ran because you are a different intake, then this will be May, June 12, paper 2-2. All right, so you can see here there's a ball. Okay, we released it is ident almost this example is almost identical as what I just discussed a few minutes ago. So here you have a ball uh, passing through point A. The speed here is not zero. Uh. So what is happening uh, is that maybe I drop the ball from a higher point. Uh. Maybe I drop the ball here. Okay, and then after that the ball will begin to accelerate and speed up, speed up, speed up, speed up. But I don't care. I start measuring from here also possible. If you remember, when I talk about the equation or the kinematics mo movement, right, the time interval has to be specific to what is in the question. All right, so we're going to begin. So we're going to throw vertically downwards, okay, and then it will rebound. So I don't know whether it's thrown at this speed or you let go and then at this point it reaches 8.4. It doesn't matter, this is you, okay. The pass is over, we start at 8.4. So if you look at the question, the ball passes A, it has a speed of 8.4, and the height is 5. Calculate the speed of the ball as it hits the ground. The answer is not zero. Uh. Whenever a ball hits the ground, it is never zero speed. Think about it this way. If it hits the ground and it's zero speed, uh, then you stand under there. Let's say you put your feet on the ground here. You dare or not? You also know it will hurt. Uh. So if it hurts, it means there's force. If there's force, it means there's momentum. Sneak preview to the next chapter. Meaning to say that, when it hits the ground, nothing is going to cause it to suddenly change its speed to zero. All the way is going to accelerate, 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 accelerate. When it hits the ground, it's not going to suddenly emergency break a split second before it touches the ground, right? What sorcery? What magic? Are you in a Harry Potter movie? So when something is going to strike the ground, it will strike at the speed that it is at, lah at the time that it's supposed to hit the ground. So V is never zero. Anyway, I'm going to do the regular stuva again. Ball travels 5 meter. And you will notice that here, oh, my sign convention is slightly different. Because I notice since everything is going down, I might as well just take down as positive. Can, I miss can. So here you can see, oh, the ball travel 5 meter downwards. Acceleration is downwards, which is positive 9.81. And it's being thrown downwards, so it's... Uh, positive 8.4. Make sense? Because it's being thrown downwards. So we're going to use the equation that has no t, which is v squared is u squared plus 2as. 
substitute the values in based on the stuva. All right. And then you can calculate the speed of the ball as it hits the ground. About 13 meter per second. Answer as usual. Magnitude only. So if you get negative because your sign convention and mine is different, that is okay as long as your answer and your working is correct. We are not looking for this equation. This equation will have no marks because we won't give you marks for equation that you correctly copy from the front page. Lah, okay, That makes no sense. You will only get marked if you substitute correctly. And this substitution is only correct if 8.4 and 9.81 and 5 have the same sign. So either 8.4, 9.81 and 5 is all negative, meaning you are taking up as positive, or 8.4, 9.8 and 5 is all positive, like this case. We will check this working. If you don't get this mark, you probably won't get the final answer mark as well. So writing out your working clearly is very important, okay? Don't skip steps. All right, next. Show the time taken for the ball to reach the ground is this much. So I can just use any Stuva equation because now a level unlocked already. I got V, oh. I can find anything I want. So I'll just use the most simple one. Lah. V is U plus A T, substituting the value in. And I can find this as around 0 0.469, which is about 0 0.47. Proven. Yay! Okay, moving on. You can see there's a graph sketching portion, but I'm just going to label some stuff here because it says that the ball rebounds vertically with a speed of 4.2 meter per second as it leaves the ground. All right? And the time that the ball is in contact with the ground is around 20 milliseconds. The ball rebounds to a maximum height H. The ball passes A at time t equals 0, Plot a graph to show the variation with time t, the velocity of the ball. Okay, continue the graph until the ball has rebounded from the ground and reaches B. So I'm just going to roughly sketch out the diagram again, because cannot see. So you're going to hit, you're going to start off with 8.4 meter per second. Hit the ground at 13 meter per second. Travel away from the ground at 4.2 meter per second. How I know, uh, the question tell you one law. Leaves the ground at 4.2 meter per second, ma. Alright, then it will go back to its maximum height. So the time taken for the ball to change from 13 meter per second downwards to 4.2 meter per second upwards is 20 millisecond. Also again given by the question. Alright, so let's continue. Now time taken for it to hit the ground is 0 0.47. Here to here is 20 millisecond. Here to here leh. You can find if you want, but Three marks, uh, because it's three marks, you should probably find. Uh, okay, so I'm going to do it the graphing way. You could always use calculation again. Okay, so now we need to draw. Draw. So I zoom in. I need to decide what scale to use. So I'm going to use 10, 20. Okay, negative 10, negative 20. Why this scale, you, you ask? Well, my friends, the largest number I have is 13. So fits, uh, all right? Okay, so we're now going to try to find uh, 0 0.47 seconds. Okay, I need a bit more scale. So 0 0.47, right, is... Uh, let's see. Pass me. Have you figured out where 0 0.47 is? Oh, no. Okay, so we're going to plot... Zero, sorry, 8.4 first in the initial. And 0 0.47 is somewhere here. This one would be 13. So from 8.4 to 13. And then this one you can join a straight line. Why? Again, gradient is constant. Straight line because acceleration is constant. So I'll join a straight line here later. But another point I know is 4.2. So when is it 4.2? Ah? 4.2 is when it's leaving the ground. So 0 0.47 plus 20 milliseconds is 0 0.49. So legit just half a box away. 0 0.7 is 3.5, is 3.5 boxes from 0 0.4. Then 0 0.49 or 0 0.5 will be right in the middle, 5 boxes. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. I'm just going to join what I know first. Now. I know it will go from 18, 8.4 to 13. That is not a problem. And then I am now trying to copy the gradient. 
Okay, this part of the graph, I kind of don't know what to draw. So I think I'm just going to let it be first. Okay, we'll decide later what to do with it. But uh, the more important thing uh, is to complete the graph. So I know it's going to rebound at 4.2. So you can see uh, when it rebounds right at halfway point, halfway point is here. This plot is wrong. The halfway point is here. Meaning when this is half, which is 0 0.49 or 0 0.5, this part here will be negative 4.2. Or around 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Cannot draw 4.2. Not possible to read. Okay, and I need to make sure that this line is parallel. La. So you can see I'm copying the line. And then I am not long enough because I want it to reach B. Ma. B is the maximum height, means the V must drop back to 0. Ta da! Like that. Long. So I'm going to rub off this part because point B is here. Okay, I'm going to pause for a bit, okay? So, what does this area represent, this, this smaller triangle? This is the rebound height. Hit the ground, rebound at 4.2, here is point B. Okay. What about this area miss? What does this represent? Well, this represents when you throw it down, the distance it travels. Lah. So, it kind of makes sense, right? If you remember uh, the video that I have. Wait, uh, let me show you the video again. This is going to take some time. Okay, so now... So, when I release the ball here, by the time the ball reaches somewhere here, maybe it's already 8.4. So what I'm doing is, uh, I'm taking... I'm starting the timing maybe somewhere here. Okay, so if I start the timing somewhere here, it hits, it rebounds. Okay, let's, start, let's look at it again. I start the timing somewhere here, hit, rebound. So when it rebounds, it's 4.2, this is point B. Or you can take this one, hit, rebound. Okay? So this is similar. Like you can see that the rebound height is a lot less. Okay? So if it's a lot less, this means um, this particular question, your triangle here, wait, ah, uh, Let's not get ahead of ourselves. This triangle here, which is the rebound height, will be much less than the height fallen from the initial point. All right? Go drop something la, and then watch it rebound, preferably not your electronic devices. La. So just to make things clear, I'm going to label the, the coordinates. This is the maximum speed when it hits the ground, 0 0.47, 13. Okay? And this is the, this is the time where it leaves the ground. 0 .7, 0 0.47 plus 20 milliseconds, which is 0 0.49. Okay, and it rebounds at negative 4.2. So look at the mark scheme. This one looks very shady. If you look at CIE's mark scheme, right, especially for A level, they're going to tell you something nonsense like reasonable curve. What is a reasonable curve? Judgment of examiner. Okay, judgment of examiner. Second part, you might be asking, Miss, why this one or not vertical? In your example, you draw vertical. Well, sometimes oh, this rebound time is very, very small. It might not be able to register on your scale. It depends on your scale. Lah. This is only half a box. Lah, okay. So if let's say it's less than half a box, then this one will be more and more vertical. Okay. So in this case, you can actually see, lah, but sometimes you might not. All right. And second thing would be suitable scale. So the scale lah, cannot be weird. Okay. When I say cannot be weird, I mean it must be like 10, 20, 30, or actually there's no other one. You cannot take 3, 6, 9, okay? Or that kind of weird, weird scale, lah, all right? Uh, paper 3 will talk more about scales. Correctly plot the first point, which is 8.4, 0, 8.4, and the last point, okay? So this is the last point. Lah. This last point here must be between the range of 0 0.88 to 0 0.96. And my answer here, okay, if I look at the, each one is one mark. And I always LL when I see the term reasonable shape. Who gets to decide what is reasonable? In your college exam, me, but in the actual exam, who knows? So you can see this point here is 0 0.8. 
So this point here would be 0 0.920, which is well within the range. Okay. Of course, you can use your stool bar and calculate because you have your U, 4.2. You have your V, 0. You also have your acceleration, which is negative 9.81. And the only thing that you need to find is the value of T. How long did it take for you to hit here? Not so much H, but T. Okay. And the last part, uh, I want a non-vertical line at 0 0.47. So this area, this line cannot be vertical. But it will be very, very steep. If I shrink the scale, it will look vertical. Uh, but now the scale is big enough for us to see that it is slightly tilted. This is the con to represent the contact time. The time where the two things are in touch. Okay, so let's move on. Three marks. Yay. For this motion, because now move from A and reaches B. Calculate the change in kinetic energy. So I'll find the kinetic energy at A. The velocity at A um, is 8.4 when you release. And at B, at B, there's no KE there. Because it's at maximum height. Uh. So KE is 0. No speed. And I put half mv square. So you get 0 minus 1.8. Uh. Okay. Final minus initial. Okay. So change is magnitude only. You want to put negative also can. Negative will tell you that your kinetic energy decreased. Uh. Naturally, right? Because it's not moving. Next. Change in GPE. So I will take the gravitational potential energy at 8.4. Which is for 5 meter. So now you notice, I, uh, I need to find H, uh, so I need to stuva this ish. Okay, so once again, uh, if you look at the stuva, yeah, if you look at the, the STUVA statement that I've made just now, when I fill in, you will notice that I have, I have now flipped the sign out of habit. This part here, going down, going up is negative. Uh. Going down to be positive. Okay? So you can see positive 9.81. The rebound height is H, which we are looking for. Without the height, we cannot find the GPE. Of course, you could be like, Miss, can't you just find the area of the small triangle in the graph? Can, sure. But I find it easier to use the equation now because I need, I look at this triangle. It's not a I need to find the height, which I look at this part here. Okay, so I think it's easier just to use equation now. Uh, use the equation with no t. All right. So in this case, I can use v squared as u squared plus two as. I'm looking for as. So I'm looking for h, which is s. All right. So your rebound height should be less than five meter lah, obviously around zero point nine meter. So a change in GP will be mgh at b minus mgh at a which is 0 0.05 times 9.81, h at a, h at b, which is 0 0.9, h at b, which is 5 meter. Okay, again, we're looking for the change. I'll take final minus initial, which is negative 2.0 joule. And the reason why I am quite strict about taking the final minus initial is because if you look at part 2, state and explain the total change in energy of the ball for this motion. And a lot of students will then take 2.0 minus 1.8, 1.8 minus 2.0. No, uh, they are both decreased. That's, that means my KE decreased by 1.8 and my PE decreased by 2. So why is my total decrease? Negative 2 plus negative 1.8, which is negative 3.8 law. Okay, so explain. Energy is lost during impact with the ground. Okay, it is converted to sound or heat. Lah. All right, so that is that example. It's a paper 2 example. Go and try the other rebound questions. You will find quite a few of them in the past years. But now we're going to move on to the objectives. Okay, this example is in page 19. As you can see, this is not an unfamiliar graph, hopefully, by this point. Okay, you have a ball released from brass above a hard horizontal surface the graph shows how the velocity of the ball bounces the bouncing ball varies with time at which point on the graph does the ball reach its maximum height after each bounce okay so let's draw or let's roughly draw the rebound of the ball unlike the previous section i'm doing this live so release from rest the ball will fall and then it will hit the ground 
Okay, I'm just not going to draw a vector here. Okay, hit the ground here at V. Alright. That would be this point. Okay. Um, how do I know? Well, the velocity will increase. Ma. You can see the magnitude is getting more and more positive. So if it's getting more and more positive, this means that it's accelerating. This also means uh, my sine convection will be down is positive, up is negative. Okay. So here is where it uh, rebounds or leave the ground. And uh, B is where it's being traveling up. Okay. Because B now you have negative. So this B here. This is point B. Point A will be hard to label. Uh, okay. It's when the the ball has maximum compression and stops for a while. Alright. So if you think about the ball, right, when the ball reaches the ground, the ground will compress the ball until the ball stops. And then the ground and then the compressed ball will begin to push back against the ground and fly up. Okay. Uh, there will be a slow motion of video of this in the remaining chapters. Lah. But think about it. When it hits the ground, it has to stop for a very short period of time. All right. Which I cannot represent here lah, in this scale of drawing. So this is point B. It will leave the ground until it reaches maximum height. So I think it's fairly obvious that this area, A1. Um, I mean, I'm just going to call it H1. Lah. So the height difference here to here is H1. This one is obviously much bigger than H2, which is here to here. Here to here is H2. Okay, so this is my uh, rebound. And uh, it reaches maximum height at C. Ding, ding, after the first bounce. Okay, so this point is C. And if you want to find point D, point D is when after rebound, you fall back down again. Then this is D law. I'm drawing them in stages lah. Okay. So you can see at each rebound, I lose velocity. I will lose kinetic energy. But here is also H2, okay. Because B to C here, it goes up. This is at the maximum position. And then it will fall down the same height. Alright. So that is this question. Once again. Sorry. If I didn't mention just now, page 90. Alright, let's look at one last one. Alright, this is in page 31. I'm not going to do the question, okay, to keep the video not too long. It's a bit dragging already. So here you can see a girl jumping vertically on a springy trampoline, okay. I just want to show you the graph, alright. This is the case where your rebound time is very long. Remember this one, the time between... Uh, this is where she hits the trampoline, this point. And this point is where she leaves the trampoline. So it reaches the trampoline. And then this point is where it leaves. So you notice that this is the long, a very long rebound time. Because when she touches the trampoline, the trampoline will begin to stretch, slowing her down until she stops. But because of inertia, she will continue to go down, stretching the trampoline further. Okay, then the trampoline is like, I will not be stretched no more. Push her back up. So now she is going to fly up. Or rather, she is going to now travel back in the opposite direction. So you can see this part here might look a bit weird. Okay. So this is where she leaves. Lo. And then when she leaves, oh, push her and she leaves. This part here, she will slow down. And this is the point where she reached the rebound height. So I repeat. Ah. Reaches the trampoline. The trampoline stretch, 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 stretch. The girl stops momentarily. This is maximum stretch. And then the trampoline is like, please leave me alone. So the trampoline will push back. Push her back, meaning uh, she will now have a speed in the opposite direction that's getting faster and faster, faster and faster. And then at this point, she begins to leave the trampoline. Okay? So, oh yeah, I label for you. Lah. So, here to here, the trampoline compresses. The trampoline compress. And here to here, Compressor, no, sorry, stretches. Sorry, I'm quite late, Leo. 
my brain not really working. It's almost 12. So this one, this is where you, she reached the trampoline and her weight stretches the springy material. So the material is being stretched. Okay. And here the material is being so you stretch the material already until you get maximum stretchy here. And then now the material will push back like a spring. You stretch, 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 stretch the you stretch the trampoline material. And then after that the material will push back up. Okay, so here is where the springy material will begin to uh, compress or return to original length. So if it returns to original length, like you push it back up and it returns to original length, then this is when the girl will lift the trampoline. Okay, so the girl will turn and then begin to lift the trampoline. You need to imagine this a bit. Lah. All right, so I'll leave this question with you. Go try, go try. It will be in your homework if you are my student. May, June 13, paper 2, 3. All right. And take care. I will see you in the next video where we'll talk about the final subtopic of projectile, which is 3.6, I think, where we begin to throw balls at an angle. Time to play some Angry Birds. See you there. Bye-bye.